Hey guys, Haruki GFX here. So today I've got another modeling tutorial. I decided to continue the series even though I didn't get the amount of likes that I wanted to. No big deal. Um, hopefully I'll get some more likes on this. Um, if it's helpful, please do leave a like. And uh, also, by the way, remember I have a contest at 1.5k, which I'm almost there. So uh, if you're not subbed already, be sure to sub and uh, look out for that contest. Anyway, let's continue. So today the tutorial is going to be about texturing. Uh, the use, the creation and use of textures. I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when you're creating a texture, you want to think about the actual essence of what the texture may be. So if it's a metal or if it's grungy, just really just focus on, on what you think that would look like in real life, if you want it realistic. I mean, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want it realistic. So anyway, let's create a quick material. So you just double click over here, obviously. I assume uh, some of you guys have some knowledge of Cinema 4D and open up your texture and uh, I always like to just stick with default color um, usually I'll disable specular unless I feel like I really need it um, but right now we'll leave specular up for now and so anyway in your color you're gonna click texture and go ahead and choose you know any texture really will work and uh, let's see I'll use um, I'll use this metal texture here so right off the bat, you're noticing the specular is kind of screwing it up. So I'm actually going to take the specular off. Um, the sampling, you can change to none. Actually, you know what? We will put the sampling back to... What was it at? Maybe it was at MIP. Yeah, we'll put it back to MIP. So just don't mess with the sampling. Uh, and then go to your bump. Because what's going to make this look really realistic is those rough kind of furrows and edges and in the texture itself. And you're going to get that from the bump. So in your color area where you just imported your texture, you can actually click this little tab over here, which this saves a ton of time, and click Copy Channel. And then go to your bump. And now it's simply you can paste the channel, and boom, there's your texture. You don't have to go look for it again. Now, one thing I like to do is it already has some strength for you there. Leave that, don't mess with that, and go into here, into the little tab again, and click Filter. And then click on the Filter tab. Now, in here we can mess with it. I just usually make it darker so that I get those really nice, clean, crisp edges. So we'll just kind of make it a little darker, turn the gamma down, maybe turn the contrast up. Whoa. Turn the gamma down a little bit and the contrast up, not too much. You don't want it too dark. And that should be okay. And now that we have that, we can maybe see how the specular looks. Yeah, the specular looks really dumb, so we're not going to mess with the specular right now. So here we have a pretty basic metal material. If you want, you can always have it mix into a color. I'll make this color black, actually. It's not really going to matter. You can have it add or subtract, in which case it's not going to work with black because it's solid black. But anyway, we will leave that. And so now for the applying of the texture. Applying a texture is really simple, but it can be really difficult at the same time. It all depends on what your object is. If it's a really, really crazy object, then you might really need to work with it. But I'll start with some simple objects. So a cube, because all of the faces are really big polygons, it's going to stretch quite far. So if you see when we apply this, it's looking all right. If you see when we apply this, we'll have this texture tag over here. Texture tags are incredibly important to pay attention to. And if you lo if you lose the window, don't worry about it. Just come back over to your object, and you can click over here and find your texture tag again. So while you're over here, you can always change the projection. With every texture that you have, projection is the most important possible thing. Just mess with it and see what works best. Usually I go with cubic. Specifically because cubic looks nice. Uh, automatically it's not going to change anything on this because this is, well, it's a cube, so there you go. But uh, here, I'll add a light source really quick so we can see what that looks like. And if I can get this to work. Alright. Add this light source, pull it back a bit. and swing in a really odd direction. Okay, let's just render that out. And as you can see, it looks all right. Um, you can kind of see those rough furrows. If I wanted to, I could go back in here and change my bump 
and maybe make it a little bit stronger so those bumps are a little more noticeable and you can see up here where the darkness is you can see that the bumps really show nice so if you were to backlight this as well it would give quite a neat effect so I just put this back here maybe turn the intensity up to one ten percent yeah, that wasn't enough backlighting but you get the idea and essentially with the cube you don't really have to do much you can if you want you can adjust the uh, the offsets and see what it does um, as you can see each one each plane moves individually so with whatever object it is it's gonna move individually no matter what uh, let's try a different object with more polygons let's say we wanted to do whoa, what could it be what could it be a landscape for example now this is not a flat surface it has a ton of polygons I mean like look at all those I'm not gonna count that that's a ridiculous amount of polygons but if I just put this right here you know, some lighting on it I believe well it, it does not like that anyway we have that not perfect but anyway if you apply the texture you'll notice right away it's uh, it looks alright if you render it, it's going to take too long. I'm going to take this light out so that it doesn't count that. I just want a rough render. And if you let it render, it's going to be really slow. Oh, it's not going to render at all. That's odd. Oh, probably because I have a global illumination. All right. Never use global illumination when you're modeling, by the way, guys. It, it really it is so useless. Never use global illumination. It wastes your time. Do not use it. Anyway. As you can see, it looks uh, it looks all right. It doesn't look too bad. It is a little too much. Uh, I don't know. It's too fine. I don't like that. I want it to be bigger. So this is where cubic comes in. Cubic is great. Now, when you switch to cubic, a lot of the time you're going to see a bunch of cubes. You're probably going to freak out and be like, "Oh, well, thanks, thanks. You screwed me over." Don't worry about it. You can click seamless, and it'll kind of eliminate those cubes a little bit or not sometimes it doesn't okay I was wrong don't you don't have to use seamless but what you can do is see down here in tiles U and tiles V that is going to basically change the size of your tile by making it smaller if you make it smaller it'll make the tiles bigger if you make it bigger if you make the number bigger it'll make the tiles smaller so what you want to do is make them bigger uh, I usually stick to a standardized 0.5 for tiles U and a standard 0.5 for tiles V. And you'll still see this kind of square here. And if, that, if you don't want that, you can always change the offset and move it around until those are gone. But I'm going to keep the offset at zero specifically because if everything looks too even, people are going to be able to tell. And it's, it's sometimes it's good to have imperfections. So anyway, right off the bat, this texture is a light texture so because it's so light you're going to be able to see those strokes whereas a dark texture would work a lot better here so because of those I don't actually want to move the offset I'm actually going to make the tiles U even bigger so I'm going to go with 0.1 and 0.1 now it's going to get a little fuzzy there but see the texture is going to start to strain itself so you don't want to make it too small so maybe 0.3 and point three and I'm actually going to move this up like that and move this across specifically for the tutorial and there you have it now when it comes to the rest of it it really all depends on your lighting if your lighting sucks then you're gonna have a bad time uh, I'm gonna do lighting in another tutorial so this light is a crappy light so don't really worry about that because it sucks um, but see if you move the light it's gonna make it look more realistic depending on where you put it see how those shadows work so if I move it closer I'm gonna have a little bit darker shadows here anyway I'm not gonna get into that I will do lighting for another tutorial if you guys want it so if you guys do want it please let me know in the comment section below don't forget to like the video if I get a ton of lights I will continue doing this please at least get it to 40 likes I would really appreciate it and uh, I'll see you guys later.